hey what's up guys and welcome back to the channel you know it's about anime king and today for the 5000 special i'm gonna be giving you the longest what if episode that i ever done what if naruto went dark this is gonna be the longest episode for my 5000 special comment down below and tell me what you think of this episode share to all of your friends on your social media platform and thank you all for helping me destroy the 5000 subscriber goal the next goal will be 6,000 and you guys will be getting even a better special next time. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. Start the intro. The light goal is past 300 and you'll be getting the next part. If you're new, switch across the playlist and check it out. The last time we left off, Naruto was sitting in the council, talking to the rest of the members on the council, as well as Minato, when Kushina tried to leave and Naruto wrap her up in chains and Mito and Menma arrived. Naruto found out that they're still alive, but before he could do anything, the Kayubi came out of him and talked to everyone in the council and tell them about the Akatsuki. Yeah guys you just have to go check out the last episode and you'll be fully catched up. So the last part we left off, someone burst in and said where is he, where is he, someone yelled. Who said that, said Minato, down here. They all looked down to see Gamakashi, Gamakashi, said Naruto in confusion. There you are Naruto, Gamakashi said. As he jumped on Naruto's shoulder, why are you here? Naruto asked. That damn pervert ran off again. And I hear that you are here, Naruto, and I haven't seen you in a while, so I thought I would just chill out with you. You can come with me and the Uchiha. I am going to his house for a while, said Naruto. That sounds great, said the frog, as the two boy and the frog on top of Naruto's shoulder went off. Minato looked at his son back as he walked away. He took a deep breath and then turned to look at the council. It seems that this council meeting is a success. Konoha is safe for the period of time, said Minato. Some of the council members started to cheer at the words that their Hokage said. Minato looked at Kushina as she ran out of the room, tears coming down her face. I have to deal with this now. He whispered and walked out the room with Menma and Mito. At the Uchiha headhouse, Naruto, Sasuke and Gamakashi enter Sasuke's house to see it was nicely furnished and well kept. The floors were clean and everything looked new. Got to hand it to you Sasuke, this is a nice place said Gamakashi on top of Naruto's head. Thank you he replied as the trio sat down on the ground. What do we do now? asked Naruto. Usually at a guy's night, we will play games. You got anything fun? Gamakashi asked Sasuke. Hmm, I do have that card game. Sasuke said to himself and left out the room. He came back with a pack of you know cards. Alright, you know is a great game, said Gamakashi. Naruto looked at Gamakashi and said what is you know? Don't worry, I will teach you everything said Gamakashi as he jumped off of Naruto's head and started teaching Naruto how to play the card game. Back at the Uzumaki estate, Mintanto entered his and his wife's room. He wanted to let her alone for a while so she could calm down. He really feel bad about what he did years ago. It is now catching up with him. He wanted to let some of the Uchiha's alive but he wanted to make sure that the village won't be suffered by any problem in the future so we decided to kill them all off. He then saw Kushina in the bed curled up in a ball. He sighed and went to her side of the bed and kneeled down. Kushina said Minato. 
but he didn't receive any answers. But he knew that she was awake. I know that you can hear me, he said. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry for what I did. I know that Mikato-san was your first friend when you came to Konoha. And now you hear that I made the order to kill her and her family. You must be hurting a lot. Kushina was listening to her husband tell to her. She understood that he had to get rid of the Uchiha clan or there will be chaos in the Lee village. Even though she knew this, it still hurt that it was her own husband who gave the order to carry out the Uchiha massacre and kill her best friend. I really feel like shit for what I did and I won't deny that you must hate me now for killing your best friend. I feel even worse when we hear about Naruto today. I am a terrible husband and a Hokage, I know it. I am suffering from my actions and I cannot even control some of the people in my village. I want you to know that I will take any punishment that you have in store for me in the future. I am going to leave now so that you can calm down. I just want you to know that I love you and I am sorry, said Minato as he rose up and kissed Kushina on her forehead and walked out the door. Kushina had tears going down her eyes as she heard the door shut, signaling that she was alone again. Mikato-san, Kushina whispered and continued to cry. The Uchiha, Naruto and Gamakashi all stopped playing cards and they went on the sofa starting to watch TV. They were watching a comedy flick. As Sasuke heard a knock on his door, he went over to open it and he saw Anbu with a cat mask. Sasuke Uchiha, the Hokage has requested that you see him in his office, said the Anbu. Sasuke growled of meeting with the Hokage after hating him so much. He then turned his head and looked into his house. I shall be gone for a while. Naruto, you're in charge, said Sasuke. I was in charge even when you were here, said Naruto as he continued to watch the television. Huh, let's go, said Sasuke as he left for the Anbu. Back at the Hokage office, Sasuke walked to his office to see Minato behind his desk and Sakura there too, in front of him. What is going on? said Sasuke. Sakura turned to Sasuke and said, I don't know, I was called a few minutes ago. She said with a confused look on her face. You two, said Minato, getting the both of them attention. You two are the only people in this village that know anything about my son. Yeah, what about it? said Sasuke. I need to know more about him. He's my son and I wish for him to get along with his younger siblings, said Minato with a serious look. I am sorry Hokage, but I think it might be too late for that, said Sakura. Maybe, but I will take my chances. I shall send Naruto on a mission with Mito and Menma soon. I want to see all of them get along, said Minato. What? A mission? Sasuke asks. Yes, to look for the last Sanin. Tsunade, said Minato. Who will take the team to find them? Sakura asked. My sensei, Jiraiya. I want him to also see if he could fix the seal on Naruto. Maybe he could be free from the Kayubi's influence, said Minato with some sort of hope in his voice. So, what do you want to know? said Sakura. What made Naruto mad? Being hit by water makes him mad quick, said Sakura. Loud places as well, he has sensitive ears, said Sasuke. He will also start to curse a lot if he is mad, so stay away from him if that happened, said Sasuke. What are his favorite things to do, asked Minato. Sleeping and killing, said Sakura, making Minato shudder at Naruto's activities. What food does he like? Cook, cook meat and oranges, I guess said Sasuke. Oranges? Really? said Minato. He said that oranges was what he mostly ate as a child, said Sakura. As Minato started to feel guilt all over when he heard that. Anything else I need to know about him? he asked. 
and don't get close to him. He really hates when people touch him, said Sasuke. And if Naruto wants something, let him have it. If you don't, you will have an early ride to heaven or hell, said Sakura as she looked at the Hokage. And don't touch his tails and don't stare at him when he eat. Calming music is his favorite type of music. If he digs a hole to sleep in instead of a tent, don't ask him about it. If he make weird noises in his sleep, don't wake him up. You know what is happening in his mind. Just don't wake him up, period. And don't rob him of his sleep. If he asks what some things mean, don't avoid the subject. Just explain it to him right away. And don't try to feed Naruto vegetables. He thinks they are from another planet. He likes to stare at the moon a lot in the night. And don't mention his family around him, said Sasuke, finishing off as he stared at Minato with a glare. If you listen to everything that we've listed, then you should be alright being near him, said Sakura. I thank you both. I shall pay the both of you the pay of a sea rank mission for this information, he said as he stood up from behind his decks as he handed them the both of them their money. Thank you Hokage, said Sakura. Sasuke just took his money and started to walk to the door. Before he did, he turned back to Minato. Even if Minma and Mito listen to the rules we stated, he still might kill them. So don't be surprised when they end up dead, said Sasuke as he then left. Back at the Uzumaki Namake's estate, we have to do what? Yell Mito as she heard what her father said to them. You two will go on a mission with Jiraiya and Naruto to look for Tsunade. We need her so she can help the injured from the past invasion, said Minato. He's going to kill us when he sees us again. Menma yelled as he pulled down his hair. No, he won't, the Kayubi said. That she will hold Naruto back from killing you too, said Minato. The Kayubi said maybe, maybe, Mito yelled out. Please, Mito, calm down, said Minato as he sat back down on the couch. I cannot. Naruto is going to kill us again now that he knows we're alive and you want to send him on a mission with us in the middle of nowhere to find this Tsunade? And the only reason we are alive now is because he fell unconscious in the council meeting and the Kayubi came out. He was going to kill us right there, said Mito. Cannot you send someone else with Naruto? Menma asked. No, this is the mess that we made and I want everyone to fix it. I want you two to go pick up Naruto from Sasuke's house tomorrow. I want you two to wake before he wakes up. Go get him something to eat or something. Walk him around the village. Just do something for your family. Because anyway, he's your older brother. And don't treat him like a stranger, said Minato. Are you sure he won't hurt us? Mito asked, as she was still scared. I promise, said Minato. He then brought out a journal and showed it to his children. What are these? The both children asked. You two need to remember these rules when you are around Naruto, said Minato as he went closer and started to tell them what Sasuke and Sakura told him. The next day at the Uchiha head house, Sasuke got out of bed when he heard someone knock on his door. He hasn't heard people knock on that door in years. Hearing someone knock brought back memories of his younger days. When he came back from the Hokage's office last night, he found Naruto still in front of the TV and Gamakashi on his, was on his shoulders watching as well. Naruto had a bowl of popcorn on his lap and was feeding it to the frog. Naruto asked what he was called for but Sasuke quickly lied and said that it was just to see if Naruto was doing alright. Sasuke then answered the door with his gym shorts that he wore to bed. He opened it to see Menma and Mito at the door. What? Ah, uh, is Naruto here? Asked Mito, trying not to stare at Sasuke's chest. Yeah, he's sleeping, said Sasuke. Can we wait inside until he gets up? Menma asked. 
No, said Sasuke as he slammed the door hard in both of their faces. It is going to be a long day, Menma whispered to himself and Mito was cursing Sasuke through the door. Two hours later, Naruto opened his eyes to found that he was in the bed with his tails wrapped around him under the covers. Naruto looked around to see that Gamakashi and Gamatutsu had squirmed their way, their way in his tails and make a nice bed for themselves. He unwrapped himself and made the frogs fall out of their warm blanket of fur. Oh, Naruto, you're awake, said a drowsy Gamakashi. Yes, said Naruto as he started to get fully dressed. Naruto started to walk to the dining hall to already see Sasuke awake, pouring some cereal. Morning, said Sasuke. Good morning, Naruto said back. You have company waiting for you at the door, said Sasuke, without looking up from the breakfast. Naruto went to the door and opened it and saw Menma and Mito sleeping on each other's shoulders. These two, said Naruto with pure hate in his voice. I should just kill these two now, he said. I really don't want to deal with them. Calm down, Naruto-kun, said Kurama in his mindscape. I do not want you to kill them now. I made a promise that you were going to keep them alive. For now, said Kurama. Naruto blew out a small flame of frustration out of his mouth before tapping the both siblings on their shoulder. Wake up, he said. Slowly, the both of them woke from their sleep. Mito then yawned. Oh, a bright sun. Where are we? said Menma. You two are at the Uchiha's house, said Naruto. Instantly, the both of them jumped up and realized that Naruto was the one who was talking and created a distance between him and them. Naruto, it's good to see you, said Mito. Cut the act. And tell me why you two are here, said Naruto in a demanding tone. We just want to hang out with you. We feel really bad that everything happened between us and we want to make it up to you. What does hang out mean, said Naruto. Oh, it means to go in town and be with people you know, said Menma, as he couldn't believe that Naruto didn't understand what hang out mean. He didn't know that Naruto was so socially awkward. Who's making you do this? said Naruto. What? Nobody. We just want to know more about you, said Mito. Bullshit. You two are scared of me. You wouldn't be here unless your father forced you two to come here. Answer me truthfully, said Naruto as he was starting to get anger at the two. Alright, Naruto, said Mito. Dad wants us to get better in knowing each other because he's going to send us all on a mission in a couple of days. He forced us to know more about you and try to get closer to you, she said as she struggled to keep a calm face as she was scared to be in front of Naruto. That fool thinks I will befriend anyone in this place, said Naruto as he blew out another small flame from his mouth making the two even more scared. But I haven't been out in a while. I shall go with you, said Naruto, making the both of them smile. Good. I know just the place to take you to make you smile, said Mito. In the town, the trio appeared in front of a small ramen stand, one that looked familiar to Naruto. I haven't been here in a long time, he said. Why, Menma asked. Because of a certain incident, said Naruto. The trio walked inside and saw a brown haired girl wearing a white apron. Hey Amy, said Menma and Mito. Ah, Menma and Mito, how are you two doing? She said with a smile. The three of them started to converse between each other, forgetting about Naruto. Naruto, on the other hand, was looking at Amy with a glare that could kill. Amy, she was feeling a bit uneasy as she turned her head and saw Naruto. Who is this person? She stopped talking and she looked at Naruto. And then her whole face started to get pale. Na Naruto? She whispered. Naruto glared at her even harder. This was the woman that he trusted 
and she and that old man betrayed him, he will get them back. He couldn't wait. Naruto looked at Amy and words that came from his mouth surprised Menma and Mito. Hello Amy, how have you been? He said. As Amy's eyes widened when she saw Naruto, she haven't seen the boy in a long time since that incident when he was younger. Naruto, you know Amy? Menma asks. Yes, I used to eat here a few times when I was younger. So you know the good food they serve here? Said Mito with a smile as she sat down as Menma and Naruto joined her. Hey Amy, where is the old man? Mito asks. He's out for a bit. He's been working too hard. So I told him I will handle things here. For today, while he stay home and rested up. Said Amy with a smile. So, what do you all want to eat? Miso ramen. Said Menma and Mito at the same time. Coming right up, she said the smile. And she turned around and made their order. What about me? Said Naruto. Yes, what is it that you want? She said Naruto, making Enma and Mito nervous because Amy was shaking as she spoke to Naruto. Chicken flavored for me. Make sure nothing poisonous is inside of it this time, he said with a growl. Amy quickly turned around, not wanting to see Naruto's face anymore. So, said Mito as she looked towards Naruto, what do you do for fun? Naruto, she asked. Sleep, kill, eat oranges, he replied. That's it, said Menma. I haven't been able to do a lot of things growing up, said Naruto. Amy turned around and started to give the trio their orders. Mizo ramen, order up, she said, and started to hand out the ramen. Thank you, Amy, said Menma and Mito. She was about to give Naruto his order, but she jumped to the sight of Naruto holding a small flame in his arm. You know, he said, if I were to set this place on fire, there could be nothing you guys can do about it. He said as he smiled up at Amy. Naruto, what are you doing? Said Mito, put that down. No, said Naruto, I am debating whether this female should die or not. Along with that old man of hers, he said with a growl as the flame in his palm got bigger a little. Please forgive me, said Amy. As she bowed her head down to Naruto, please. Me and my dad felt guilty as ever since what happened that night, she yelled out. What are you talking about? Mito asked. What? said Menma. He didn't even want to know that Amy also did something bad to Naruto when he was growing up. Oh, it was nothing, said Naruto with a fake smile. Just that the first people I thought I could trust betrayed me, he said. Flashback. A five-year-old Naruto was walking down the street to his favorite place in the whole village, Ichiraku Ramen. The people who worked there was Amy and that old man. They were the first one who treated him good. They found him in the alley. They picked him up and helped him. And they gave him the first ramen he ever tasted and he loved it from then on. Ever since then, he would visit almost every day. Naruto walked in the stand with a smiling face as he saw his two favorite peoples. Hey Amy, hey old man, said Naruto as he sat down on a stool. Oh, hello Naruto, said the old man with a frown look on his face. What is it, said Naruto. Aren't you happy to see me, said Naruto as he looked at the old man because he could sense that there was something going on. The old man put on a fake smile and looked up towards Naruto. Of course I am happy to see you kid. As he ruffled Naruto here. Now, you want some ramen? He asked. Yes, of course, said Naruto with a big smile on his face. Amy put a bowl of a big ramen in front of Naruto's face, making his mouth water. Thank you, he yelled out and started digging. Not noticing. The frown look on Amy and their father's face and the tears run out of their eyes. He then started to eat and eat without a care in the world. He was really hungry, running from the villagers all day. What is going on? said a Josie Naruto. His eyes start started to get bleary and he started to lose his balance. He looked up to the both of them 
and saw that they were crying when they were looking down at Naruto. We had to do this, Naruto. Please forgive us, said the old man. After that, Naruto blacked out in the alley. Naruto opened his eyes. He felt really bad and his stomach felt worse. What was going on? He didn't understand. He wondered why the old man and Amy were looking at him like that when he was about to pass out. Look, the demon is awake, said a voice that woke Naruto straight up. He turned his head to see a massive mob of people with hateful eyes. What is going on? said Naruto. Those two ramen people actually pulled it off. I thought they would just take our money and run off, said a voice. What do you mean? said Naruto as he talked to the crowd. Those two shop owners were paid off by us to drug your food and make you fall asleep, said a man in the crowd. They wouldn't do anything like that, yelled Naruto to the mob. The people only laughed at Naruto. Yeah, you keep on thinking like that while we beat you. No one in this village loves you, demon, said the man as the mob started to attack Naruto. End of the flashback. I stayed in that alleyway for two days for what you guys did. Shouldn't I punish you for what you did? Yelled Naruto as the flame started to grow. Naruto stop, yelled Mito. You shall die and that old man is next, Naruto yelled. He was about to throw the flame at Amy, but he then heard a voice. Stop Naruto, said Kurama. You shall get your revenge later, but for now, it is not the right time. I don't want you to get worked up right now, Kurama said. Naruto growled at what Kurama said, but then he put out the flame in his hands, listening to Kurama. Amy moved her arms from in front of her face, and looked at Naruto with pure fear and terror in her eyes. You are lucky that Kurama doesn't want me to kill you now, but soon it will happen and I will enjoy ripping your flesh off your bones, he said, while he growled and left the shop. Mito and Menma looked at each other and put their money on the counter and run after Naruto, leaving Amy crying all to herself. With Naruto, Naruto needed to find some place to calm down. He was really mad at not being able to kill that woman. But he has to listen to Kurama. He was now walking in the park in Konoha, trying to find a nice tree that he could lay in. Hey Naruto, he then heard two annoying voice said as he turned to see Menma and Mito running up towards him. Are you alright, Naruto? Mito asked. I was never hurt, said Naruto as he continued to walk. The trio continued to walk beside Naruto. While the three of them was walking, Menma and Mito saw the parents grab their kids and left the park when they saw sight of Naruto. The both of them felt guilt, pure guilt and sadness to see what Naruto go through on a daily basis. Naruto then jumped up in a big oak tree and sat down. He was done going through the villages for right now. At the Hokage's office. Alright Minato, what is it that you want? Asked Jiraiya. I need all the yokei blocking seal that you have, said Minato. Yokei blocking? Why? He asked. For his son, said Danzo as he entered the office. Danzo, nice to see you, said a sarcastic Jiraiya. This isn't a joke, Jiraiya, yelled Danzo, shocking Jiraiya. He's right, we need your strongest Yoke blocking seals for my son, Naruto, said Minato. Why? Are you two planning something? Jiraiya asks. When you and my children leave to go find Tsunade, we shall make a new cell for Naruto. He's too dangerous to have him roaming about in the village. As much as it's paying me to do it, I have to think about Konoha safety first, said Minato as Danzo shook his head to every words that Minato said. Are you sure? asked Jiraiya. If you do make this new cell, then wouldn't your deal with the Kayubi be broken and Naruto will be able to do anything he wants in the village if this cell doesn't hold him? Maybe, but if we put Naruto in this new cell that I am developing, he won't be able to leave it. 
and you will be stuck there. So the village will be safe, said Minato. That's why I need you to take your time in finding Tsunade. Because we are going to need a lot of time if this new cell we are making to hold Naruto inside. We need to make it the most powerful cell in Konoha that can hold any amount of yoke that Naruto forced into it. Where is the new cell located? Jiraiya asked. Minato pointed right underneath him, under the Hokage's office. I have my ninjas in there right now expanding the area that will hold Naruto, said Minato. The whole cell will be in the shape of a dome, said Danzo. Seals will cover the walls and there will be a narrow doorway, seals all over it. So Naruto wouldn't be able to get out. And we shall make reinforced handcuffs with seals on them as well. As compartments underground, the lock is tail in as well. He won't be leaving this cell. The only problem we will have is actually placing him in the cell. But once we have him, he won't escape, said Danzo. Jerry then rubbed his chin and thought about it. It was a good idea and it was in the Hokage's office. So if anything come too bad, Minato had to take on Naruto. If he failed, everyone in the village would be doomed. So they had to make sure the cell was strong enough to hold him. This truly could work. All right, I will go find the kids now and tell them that we're leaving in two hours to go find Tsunade. On the road, I might train Mito and Menma, seeing that Naruto won't want any training from me. This will also buy you more time to build a cell while keeping Naruto in the dark. We should make something for Naruto to wear so we can compress some of his strength while on the road though, said Jiraiya. What about a stray jacket? asked Minato, making Jiraiya smile at the thought of that idea. Later outside of the Uzumaki estate, Minato went home. As he was retrieving some seals, not ready to tell Kushina anything about the idea, he just saw that she was still in bed, so he decided to leave her and went back to the Hokage's office. Outside of the Uchiha clan estate, Naruto, Menma and Mito was going back to the Uchiha house because they were done with the park for today. Menma and Mito start to look at Amy differently for what she has done, even good people like her and her father could be bought off for money. Naruto then stopped and turned and looked at the siblings, getting a good look at them and said, you two were saved by your mother. During the exam finals, I have come to an agreement not to kill you since I am under the protection of Konoha, but make no mistake, if you give me the reason to, I will kill you, understood? He said as he get a nod from the both of them. Good, he said and start to walk away. Just in time, Jerry appeared in front of them. Before you all split up, I have to say something. I have things to do, said Naruto. Tomorrow, we all should go on a mission to find Tsunade. Minato wants her because the people of the Konoha is injured from the last invasion and she is the only one that can truly heal them. And once we find her, we shall return to Konoha with success. He said to them, What time do we meet? Menma asked. 7 a.m. shark. And pack for a month trip. See you tomorrow. And Jerry had disappeared. The next day at Konoha's gate, Naruto walks up to the gate to see Menma and Mito and Jerry already there. Naruto had sealed up all of his belongings in a storage scroll, so he didn't have to bring any backpack. Good, we're all here, said Jerry. We now just need to wait for your father, said Jiraiya. Why? Isn't father staying in the village? Mito asked to Jiraiya. Yes, but he needs to give me something important, said Jiraiya, while looking at Naruto. While they were waiting, the last person they expected to walk up to them did. Hinata, said Menma as he looked at the pale beauty. Hello Menma-kun, she said as she walked up to him. What are you doing here? He asked. I came to talk to you, she said, as she turned to look at the rest of the group. In private, she said. Getting the hint, Mito and Jiraiya walk off the side to give them private, but Naruto didn't move an inch. 
um, Naruto said Hinata getting his attention would you please leave me and Menma alone for a second she asked with a smile Naruto looked at her with a face that says that he doesn't care as he just simply grunted and walked to the side and hopped on a tree and closed his eyes so what is it that you want Menma asked Hinata as he looked at her with some sort of hatred in his eyes he still couldn't come to forgive her for what she said in the tuning exams please listen to me she began I know that we haven't talked in a while because of what I said and I deserve it I didn't believe in you when you believe in me it must have hurt you to hear that from the person you trust the most but please believe that I've been staying up at night crying because I realized what I've said could jeopardize our relationship I wanted to come to you sooner but I I was just too scared to hear what you will say to me she said as she started to cry as tears start to run down her cheeks I am so sorry Menma I should have done better and believe in you please understand I didn't want you to get hurt by fighting Neji that is why I said what I said please forgive me she said as she put her head on his shoulder Menma just looked down at her he then put his arms around her and took her in close I forgive you Hinata you are lucky I'm such a good guy he said the grin you really mean that she said with wide eyes yes you know that I still love he couldn't finish his sentence as Hinata delivered a big kiss mouth to mouth making his eyes widen before starting to enjoy the kiss himself after separating they both put their foreheads together looking in each other's eyes thank you she whispered in a smile you're welcome when i come back i'll spend some more time with you all right she said with another quick kiss Hinata run off feeling better than she did in a long time benma turned his face to see mito with a huge grin on her face and jiraiya trying to hold in his smile and the laughter that was going to come after shut up said menma as he knew what was going to happen ah uh, you're whipped you're whipped jeria said as he laughed out he was in pure enjoyment then he felt lots of pain as mito kicked him right in the nuts hard shut up pervis age said mito as she went down to hug her brother good job bro yeah i appreciate it he said and returned the hug when they break their hug a familiar yellow flash appeared in front of them hey how is everyone said minato in a smile oh hey dear minato said jiraiya apparently healed from the kick he had received what are you doing here said mito i need to see naruto he replied as he walked over to the tree and called out to him naruto I need to give you something he said Naruto looked down at the Hokage he just wanted to leave as soon as possible so we decided to get done with it he then floated down to Minato surprising everyone there you just flew said Mito how don't worry about it what do you want Naruto asked Minato I need you to wear this while you are away said Minato as he opened up a scroll and a poof of smoke appeared and when it died down it revealed a white straight jacket Naruto just look at the straight jacket it was white with the arms having extra sleeves there were belts going around the jackets that could hold down the arms that were wrap around the front Naruto looked up at Minato with a dead look Minato had a sweat going down his face what is this for asked Naruto you you know it's the latest fashion and I thought that you wow Naruto cut him off before he finished why are they yokei blocking seals on it Naruto asked I don't know who put those there maybe you should check it on the inside while wearing it you want me to wear that said Naruto as a moment of silence went by maybe said Minato if you are this scared to talk to me as a little boy maybe you don't deserve to be Hokage so tell me the purpose of this thing you call the latest fashion said Naruto all right it's a straight jacket with lots of yokei seals inside of it I need you to wear it in, in case you go kind of crazy and we need to hold you down Minato explained 
Naruto just looked at Minato with the same look he gave him earlier. He then grabbed the jacket out of Minato's arms. You could at least make it black or red, said Naruto as he took off his hoodie and replaced it with the jacket. Naruto finally had the jacket on and the sleeves were touching the ground. Now what, said Naruto. He could feel his yoke repress, but he could break this if it was necessary. I have got the rest, said Minato as he grabbed the long sleeves and tied them around Naruto. He then locked them up in the buckles, finally trapping Naruto in the jacket. There, all done, said Minato with a fake smile as he looked at Naruto. I shall wear it for now since you are scared, said Naruto as he turned and headed towards the gate as his tails were swinging in the air. Make sure he doesn't get into too much trouble, said Minato as he watched Naruto headed towards the gate. Sure, you just focus on the project that you have started, said Jiraiya getting a nod from Minato. Hokage then turned to his two children and hugged them. You two, stay safe and try to get close to your brother. He really needs it. Also, don't ask about the jacket. Just know that it had to be done. He said, getting a nod from the two. He then disappeared in a yellow flash. Alright you two, we're out, said Jiraiya as he started to march out the village with the two Jennings follow him. In wave, Zaku, Yokimo, Fu, Dosu and Kin were currently, were currently running for their lives. Why do you ask? It was just Zabuza hard training program. The group came to wave. They were instantly taken in by Zabuza and Haku. They all live in a big mansion that Tazuna made them. They quickly told Zabuza the situation of Naruto sending them over to be a part of Wave and Zabuza said that he will start them on their training. He noticed that all of the kids had potential but they had to go through his art training techniques to get them to their higher and greater powers. The group on the other hand have been greatly enjoying the lifestyle changes even if they had to deal with Zabuza hard training. They enjoyed their situation. They finally felt like they had a family between each other, something all of them hadn't felt in a long while. The people of Wave welcomed them with open arms, making them feel better than ever. Outside of Konoha, Naruto, Mito, Menma and Jiraiya were walking through the forest in a slow pace. Naruto knew that Jiraiya was staring at him. What? said Naruto. Nothing, said Jiraiya as he turned his head. Why are we going to find this woman at such a slow pace? Asked Naruto, making Jiraiya sweat. We aren't in a hurry. Plus, I bet it isn't hard to find Tsunade anyway, said Jiraiya, coming up with a quick excuse. You're lying, I can tell you are. If we are finding a healer to heal the people in the hospital that suffer, suffer very hard from the invasion, Shouldn't we move in at a quicker pace? Are you hiding something from me? Naruto quickly analyzed, making Jiraiya sweat even more. Come on Jiraiya, Jiraiya said to himself. Come up with an excuse. That is really good, come on, he said to himself, not knowing what to say to Naruto. All of a sudden, he had a good idea in his mind. It is because I need to train these two on some things. Right, Menma and Mito? said Jiraiya as he nudged the both of them in their ribs. Yeah, I need help developing my chakra chains, said Menma. And I need a lot of help too, said Mito. Naruto looked at the smiling group suspiciously before turning his head and jumping into a tree. He didn't want to deal with these humans now. Inside of the mindscape, Naruto walked into the master bedroom in his mindscape to see Kurama sleeping. He looked at her with a smile. She really looked beautiful to him. He laid down next to her, not trying to wake her up as he wrapped his arms around her. His action caused her to wake up. She yawned and looked over at Naruto. Yes, it's me. I try not to wake you. No, it is fine. I need to get out of the bed anyway, she said. She then looked at Naruto, seeing that he was laid out on the bed. Sting Naruto knew, he saw Krama climb on top of him. Sitting on his midsection, he looked up to see a cocky smirk on her face. You know, she said, it's been a while since we've done it. 
You've been so busy. You want to, said Naruto. I always want to, said Kurama. As outside of the mindscape, Jiraiya and the two other Jennings looked at Naruto to hear him making some weird sounds and he had a huge smile on his face. Hmm, what is going on in his mind? said Jiraiya as he was curious. Back at Konoha, Kurunai, Kakashi, Gai, Asuma, four Jonis of Konoha were panting in front of two s rank criminals, Itachi Uchiha and Kisame. Kakashi had signaled everyone earlier to follow them from a coffee shop. After meeting up with them, Kakashi asked why they were here. They are looking for the Kayubis. That was the only thing that Kisame said and they instantly started the fight. Asuma and Kuronai being on the losing side. Kakashi then came in to save the day, saving Kuronai from Kisame's wrath. But that was only for a moment as they were being beat down again. Guy then appeared in front of them and telling them about the counter strategy he had when going up against the Sharingan. Before they could even fight, Kakashi then started a conversation with Itachi, gaining everyone's attention. Itachi, why are you looking for the Hokage's children? For a reason of my own, replied the silent Uchiha. You know, Sasuke told the counsel of what you did or what you were forced to do, said Kakashi. Itachi's eyes opened wide for a second before closing them. I see. Then the Hokage realized his mistake, asked Itachi. Yeah, but it's a long road ahead, said Kakashi. Enough small talk. Where are the Jinjulki? asked Itachi. They aren't here. They are long gone with Jiraiya. You won't find them. A shame. We shall now leave, said Itachi. With Itachi and Kisame vanishing from no sight. Later that day, Sasuke walked up the stairs in the hospital to hear that Kakashi was fighting some rogue ninja that got through Konoha's walls. He then walked up the stairs and made some hear something that made his heart stop right through the doorway. I heard that it was Itachi Uchiha who was in the village looking for the Jinjulikis. Is it true? asked a random Jonin. What? Sasuke yelled. As his Sharingan activated from what he heard, everyone in the room looked towards Sasuke's direction. Then they see him dash off. Damn it, tell the Hokage about the situation, said Kakashi, getting a bad feeling of the situation in hand. At the town inside of the landing fire, so many pretty women around, said Jiraiya, with stars in his eyes as he looked at all the women in the area. Come on, pervy sage. We have to check into the hotel, said Mito, as she really wanted to get some sleep after the training that she and Jiraiya and Menma go through. Then a beautiful woman walked past Jiraiya and winked at him, making his heart flutter. Here, this is the room key. You three go up there and do whatever siblings do in a trio family, he said and threw the key at Menma. As they watched, Jiraiya ran off, leaving the trio by themselves. Let's just go and get some rest, said Menma, getting a nod from Mito and silence from Naruto. They all walked into the room and headed to bed. Late in the night, Naruto woke from his sleep as he heard someone knocking on the door. He walked over to see Menma and Mito they were sleeping. Naruto made both of them share a bed since he said he wasn't going to sleep with either of them putting some killer intent behind his words to show that he was serious. Naruto got out of his bed and he wasn't wearing the straight jacket anymore, just some black gym shorts, not on other clothes on his body. He walked up to the door before opening it and put his hand on the handle and opened the door and looked up at a man in a robe with clothes on it. Who are you? he said. No one, said the mystery man. I just want the Jinjuliki. Naruto looked straight into the man's eyes to see Sharingans. You're Itachi Uchiha, said Naruto. Itachi was surprised that the holder of the Kayubi soul knew he, who he was. He was more surprised that the Genjutsu he tried to put on Naruto when they made eye contact shattered in pieces. 
How do you know me? Itachi asks bluntly. You're someone I admire. Killing all of those Uchiha's must have been fun. Personally, I hate the Sharingan. The same thing that you are staring at me with. Said Naruto with a smirk, hoping that he could get under Itachi's skin. Itachi just looked at Naruto with a blank look. I don't care, I need the Jinjuriki. Show them to me, he said. Naruto was thinking of the whole situation that he was put in right now. Apparently, the Uchiha didn't know that Naruto held all of Kurama's chakra and still thought that Menma and Mito did instead. Smirk appeared on Naruto's face. Sure, come on in, said Naruto, as he recalled his tales inside of him. No need for them to be suspicious. Kisame and Itachi raised their eyebrows at this. They didn't think that Naruto would be so cooperative. They walked into the room to see a sleeping Menma and a sleeping Mito, proving that Naruto was true to his words and this wasn't a trick. Kisame walked over and grabbed the both of them, putting them on his shoulders. He made sure to check the seal on their bellies. When he saw them, he made sure that these were the ones he were looking for. Thanks, Kisame, said. Usually, the people close to the Jinjuriki would try to fight back, but it seems that you're different. I am not close to those two. I hate them. You can take them if you want. Good doing business with you, said Naruto with a smile. As he got back in the bed, he finally got rid of Menma and Mito and he wasn't the one who killed them. He can play a prank on the Akaski and get away scots free and tell everyone that it was the Akaski. But guys, this is where I end this episode guys. Yeah, you're going to be getting another long long episode guys in this week. Yeah, you're going to be getting another long long episode. For the 5000 special, it's two episodes guys, you're going to be getting one long, even longer than this one guys. But this is where I end this episode, tell me down below if you enjoy this and if you enjoy the long episode. But I'm going to finish this right here guys, comment below and tell me what you think, like 300 likes and get the next part as soon as possible. But more for now guys, peace.